Here is uh, our Dr. Farah Mas. Thank you, Paul. Uh, the concept of uh, teaching uh, Materia Medica is a very old thing in my practice. Uh, I started teaching Materia Medica way back in 1979, this topic. And what is the most important thing that I always want to teach in uh, Materia Medica class is that the real Materia Medica of any homeopathic practitioner should not be a book but it should be Materia Medica that is derived from 20 or 10 good cured cases where you have used only one remedy and no other remedy and you have seen some brilliant changes in the pathology or the symptomatology of the patient and collection of those data is the best materia medica of that remedy because that is what you have seen that is what you have confirmed and that is what you will live with with rest of your life this is how you build up your pictures of materia medica How do we know the individual characteristics of this remedy? Do we just know the Materia Medica by heart like a parrot? No, this is very dangerous. I'll tell you, Nash, a very famous homeopath from Eugene, which is in California, came to London to visit Richard Hughes. And when he visited the clinic of Richard Hughes, he found that Hughes is not very successful with his patients. Even though he wrote a very big volumes on Materia Medica known as Encyclopedia of Drug Pathogenesis. And Nash was very shocked that here is a man who knows so much of Materia Medica, but in his practice he is not very successful. Why? And so, let us see what Nash said. Nash said that if you want to learn French language, you cannot memorize the French dictionary. Because memorizing a French dictionary will not teach you the grammar and the sentences and the phrases and the art of conversation in French language. So memorizing has really never been very useful. Now, drug brewing of homeopathic materia medica is quite different what Henneman felt and what we do today, which is a vast difference. What we do today is not very good and what Henneman did was the best. And I would like to elaborate on this point in detail. Even though Henneman was attacked very badly by Richard Hughes about his drug brewing, that he is proving only one remedy on same prover all the time and he is using sick provers in his proving methods and there are some provers which he only corresponded on letters and this and that. Yes, it was a fact. Henneman did all these mistakes and he was attacked by the Richard Hughes and then people were not very happy with what Henneman did and so the homeopathic doctors from all over the world said we will reprove all the drugs which Henneman did in Pan American Congress, they decided to do reproving. And fortunately for Henneman, most of the provings were exactly the same. Because I will tell you why. I will later on tell you why. And look at the modern provers who are proving remedies left, right, and front. And what you see today in those proving is that there is hardly anything to grasp from, you know. It will have a symptom, head pain, worse morning, worse afternoon, worse evening, worse night. Well, I don't understand anything from that. Practically, it's like that. And then, there will be 10 pages of dreams, 5 pages of cravings and aversions, 
another 10 pages on mind and half a page on physical symptom and that's the end of the proving and even from that if I try to analyze the dreams and if I try to understand the mental symptom I don't get a good picture the reason is the fault is not with the people who prove, do the proving the fault is with the person who introduced this is proving very prematurely very fast as if there is a competition and not trying to edit the proving properly and getting the meaning out of it I'll give you another example let's take an example of Nux Vomica a very very common remedy Hahnemann did a very nice justice to this remedy this is one part of the Herring's diagnostic method which I'll be talking now one part Herring always said that when you read the proving that means when you are reading the book on Materia Medica Pura that is nothing but the provings of Hahnemann try and see four things Herring said you should always study Materia Medica in four steps that is what his method is a part of the method is first is the organ he just says just close your eyes and think this remedy the bulk you know and in EH this is a very nice thing if in EH if you try to see maybe Rene can show you that if you put one remedy it will show you which organ has got the highest symptoms you know this is what Herring always said the pathogenesis of a remedy on a human organ and there will be only one or two such organs there will not be all the organs will not get all the marks in the repertory analysis so he just says the organ then he says once you have identified that and we are sure of it the next level and the next level is the symptom try and understand the symptom so the organ you have identified and now you have to identify the symptom for that organ very nicely Hahnemann gives example now this is what Hahnemann says when he talks about arsenic he says burning sensation within the blood vessel see I don't know how provers told him these symptoms but then when you see the same author Hahnemann in Carbovage he says burning sensation below the skin now see below the skin is different than within the blood vessel sensation is still the same but the organs are different one is skin the second is the blood vessel and that is why in finer differentiation Hahnemann mentions of course he doesn't mention everything in one lecture he says very nicely the burning in arsenic is much more deeper and burning in carbovage is much more superficial finish you understood this is what he wants you to interpret when you read the proving of arsenic when you read the proving of carbovage but what does herring wants you to do herring is very smart he tells you very systematically identify an organ identify a symptom and see what is this symptom and what is symptom actually he is describing whatever examples he has given Herring has given very nicely at the end of some years of practice in homeopathy when Herring was very matured he said certain sensations are more characteristic of certain organs this is what Herring said after some time that certain sensations are very characteristic like he said piercing pain and cutting pain and he said cutting pain is more related to the abdominal organs while a piercing pain sharp shooting pain is more characteristic with the heart you understood now who told him this well he, he read many remedies he understood many remedies and he proved many remedies so he knew 
the provers are coming out with this type of symptom more to with this and he said drawing pain is more related to the scalp and the head of course this was not always a law but this was the observation see we are not discussing law but we are discussing an observation so herring said organ then he said symptom and then he says very nicely that this symptoms is highlighted when when does it get highlighted that means when does this symptom becomes prominent and here herring is asking you to find out while reading while eating while drinking while walking while running while thinking this symptom comes out you understood and then he says how does this symptom go away by sleeping by pressure by heat by cold by sleep so first he talks about organ then he talks about symptom then he talks about the third part when does it come out and when does it go back and the last part what he says is what i have learned a lot from herring and this i have applied a lot in my practice and this herring learned from hanneman actually this is what herring learned from hanneman and he says that study a group of symptoms from that proving which will help you to identify that remedy he says what does he say he says collect a group of symptoms from that remedy you follow he doesn't say organ group of symptoms okay now each symptom may be having a different organ or for the same organ also and he says those group should have those symptoms which directly identifies that remedy maybe he is talking about keynotes who knows because he is not using the word keynotes but i feel he is talking about the most peculiar and then i'll give you an example what herring actually means let's take an example of a person who drinks alcohol okay this is what hanneman has written in nakswamika okay hanneman says now when hanneman proved nakswamika there were people who were consuming alcohol consumption of alcohol is not an addiction in europe at least it's a part of a normal social life correct so you cannot call this as addiction but what hanneman says after drinking alcohol see the one of the provers huh? in the proving he says after consumption of alcohol he becomes very nice he becomes very gentle he becomes very polite he becomes very generous and does lot of things good to others he will give you everything but when but when only under the influence of but individually if you take the symptom generous to you will see nakswamika but that is not correct because he is not always generous within a seminar he will never be generous in his business he is never be so generous only when he comes and then hanuman says but there are exactly opposite people who become very violent become very angry become very quarrelsome under the influence of alcohol and then hanuman says one more thing that people who are generally mild and you consume alcohol become violent and people who are generally angry and drink alcohol become generous and that is what he says under nakswamika the observation was that nax is basically an irritable personality a very young angry personality a very fault finding personality and if such people they consume stimulants alcohol under the influence of that they become very mild docile gentle generous they can do everything they can give you everything till the effect is there once the effect is over they come back to their original position and here what hanneman tries to compare is with another remedy and that is tefisegria because tefisegria under the influence of alcohol becomes irritable angry and can be violent so this is very important now why nux requires alcohol to begin with nux requires alcohol because he is tired he is exhausted 
He has worked, 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 and he needs a break, and he needs a halt. He needs to stop, and only one thing can make him stop, and that is his craving for stimulants. And the important stimulants which he loves is two: tobacco and alcohol. And when he is under that influence, now what is all this? Why I told you all this? This is what Herring wants you to remember in the proving that collect a group of symptoms that identifies that drug and not many drugs. Now when I talk about this, an irritable man, a censorious man, a quarrelsome man, takes alcohol, becomes very generous, gives away everything in that. How many remedies you know about this in whole of Materia Medica? Maybe none. This is what Herring says, your maturity in learning from the proving should come to that stage. So when everybody says in school that, oh, learning Materia Medica from Pura is so boring, so boring. Yes, it is very boring because there are no fancy stories, there are no fairy tales. Correct? But if you follow this, I tell you the study will be very stimulating because from everything you can bring out something which is very, very unique. And this is what I want you to know.